So actually, this was a really, really breathtaking talk for me. So I have to get some oxygen back into my brain, and I hope you will join me. So please stand up. Stretch a little bit. Just breathe. Put your arms to the side. Be careful not to hit anyone. <laughs> Put your arms up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down a little faster. Okay, thank you everyone. Please take a seat again. So, I have to admit I'm a little bit disappointed. You know, I did not expect me to take off the ground. Obviously, I'm carrying two people. But in a room full of so many outstanding people, I expected at least one to fly. So it might be that we humans can't fly. Why is that? Because we're too heavy for the power that our ch muscles generate. So this is what nature teaches us. If we want to fly, we, won't, we, have, to leave, uh, we have to lose weight. My name is Nina Geisert, and I'm at the Bionic Learning Network of Festo. We are a team of seven motivated people, supported by technicians and researchers all around the world. Our network has one goal. We want to learn from nature, transfer that knowledge into technology to improve the production of the future. And today I want to show you four principles that already helped us from nature to make better technology. I will show you how we can let ideas fly with bionic thinking, and at the end you will experience how we can have a whole robot fly efficiently like a real bird. I just said production, what looks production like? So this is just a short glimpse. It already looks quite complex, right? Until now, production was quite linear. A company produced a product, mass produced it, and the customer was supposed to be happy. But now we have the power. We want to have personalized products, and we want to have the newest products. And especially, you all know that in electronics, new versions of the same product flood the market every half a year. So production has to change. It has to become flexible, adapt to different products, and be energy efficient at the same time. And here we can learn a great deal from nature, because nature always changes. Look outside, right now we have fall. There were still leaves on the trees a couple of days ago. Now there are no leaves anymore. It's cold, rainy. Soon we will have snow. And every little animal out there has to adapt to this change. And this is why Festo founded the Bionic Learning Network, to learn from nature how to adapt to change, because actually nature has optimized these strategies for millions of years during evolution. We do not want to copy nature, we want to learn from nature. And here's our first role model. It stands for flexibility. What do you think is inspiring about it? The color change, right? But for us, the tip of the tongue was even more inspiring. It wraps around an object and holds it tightly, no matter if it's small or big, rough or smooth. We took inspiration and built a flex-shaped gripper, a gripper that can pick and place almost anything. It also wraps around an object. Until now, we had to use one picker to pick an apple and maybe another one to pick a banana or even a pear. But with this, inspired by nature, we can pick and place almost anything from sunglasses to little balls and even the cup in the back. The next inspiring role model were ants. But what is interesting about ants? Actually, it's communication. So these tiny animals cannot do much, but together they can do big things. The biggest ant colony stretches from Italy to Spain along the Mediterranean coast for over 300 kilometers, and all of these animals can communicate with each other. 
to better understand how this works, we built these tiny robots, the bionic ant. You know 3D printing technology, right? But the interesting thing is that they can work together to do something that one single one is not able to do so. So one robot tries to move an object, but it's too weak, so it calls another ant for help. They calculate their trajectories, they push and pull, and if needed, they call a third ant for help. They do that fully autonomously, without a central computer. They organize themselves. And here's just a little nerd information. To do that, we had to put all the sensors, computers, electronics onto this little body. And we did that by using 3D MID technology. We printed the circuits onto the body directly, and we were the first in the world to do so. Furthermore, this little robot learns by itself how to move its legs to get from A to B. We will not see hundreds of ants in a production line, but we learned a lot. We will have machines in the future that can communicate, and if one machine stops functioning, it can call another for help. And they can use machine learning algorithms to make the whole process more energy efficient. But still, we want the human to have full control over everything, and we all are easily overwhelmed by data, so we have to reduce the complexity. And here we took inspiration from the dragonfly. The dragonfly weighs less than a stamp and has so thin wings you can't hardly see them. They are only three microns thick. Still, it can reach a top speed of 54 kilometers per hour and fly up to 1,000 kilometers without landing. It can go forward, left, right, up, down, hover on the spot, and accelerate swiftly again. It is only able to do so because it can control every wing independently in amplitude, frequency, and angle of attack. We built the Bionicopter. This little robot has a wingspan of 63 centimeters. It only weighs 145 gram, also it has sensors, control units on board and it almost flies like a real dragonfly. Therefore, we had to control amplitude, frequency, and angle of attack like the real animal. We needed nine motors to do so. And if you think of a quadrocopter, that is already hard to control, but here we have nine motors, and every person would be overwhelmed if he has to control that with just two hands. So, we built an intelligent app and Onboard electronics. The pilot only has to give the direction and the speed, and everything else is calculated on board. And this is what we transfer to the production line. To give full control to the human, we only present the relevant information in an intuitive way. So I showed you that a chameleon can make a production line more flexible, learning and communication, but we want the whole thing to be energy efficient, and we just learned that we humans can't fly because we're too heavy, but birds can fly because they have hollow bones. The hollow bones save weight and material and make them flexible and light enough that they fly. And I promised you that we will have a robot here that will fly efficiently like a real bird Actually, it is designed to fly outside. Here it had very little space, but we still give it a try. So look above you, there's our smart bird. Maybe we need a little bit light, so yes, a little bit more light. And maybe the camera can go a little bit away because it has a wingspan of two meters and now it's ready to take off.
Yeah, so it's designed to fly outside really like a real bird. So it has some struggles in this little space. But it has a wingspan of two meters and weights only 450 gram. It can fly up to 25 kilometers per hour. And it flies for 20 minutes with just one cell phone battery. And it does so because it's lightweight. And if we want to build efficient machines, we have to reduce their weight. So you might think that a project like the Smart Bird, now it looks quite easy. The Bionicopter, especially in the video, looked so easy. But these projects are not easy. Still, we managed to do that within one to two years. Smart Bird flew after two years, and Bionicopter was developed within just one year. Still, it was really, really tricky. But we learned something from that. There's something that is more important than having the smartest people, and something that is also more important than having the biggest budget. This is something that unites the team. And for us, it's the inspiring natural role model we start with, and a spirit that we call bionic thinking. And I hope I show you that we learned already a lot from nature, but there's so much more we can learn from nature, about organizations, materials, or design. So next time you go for a little stroll outside or hiking in the mountains, please, if you see an ant or a butterfly or a bird, look at it with open eyes. Maybe, just maybe, it will reveal its secrets to you, and you can learn something that let your ideas fly.